Okay, I think we're still. Are, do we have Christian Kirk? I saw him. I Do see we him have back Christian? There. Oh, yeah. Christian, you're hiding from me. All right, we got Christian Kirk coming up, so we're not going to bore you with the dull drums of, of uh, Pat Mahomes and his legacy. But here he is hamming it up with Marissa. All right, we'll be back after this. We got to get out of here, uh, and we will have Christian Kirk joining us. Christian Kirk, you buying breakfast for everybody? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's on his tab. We'll be back after this. Yeah. And then we've got Jake Cutler on the show, Brenda Marshall on the program, Up and Adams at the Super Bowl. Yeah, hey, let me feed the beast. Hot for the touchdown, Christian Kirk. Hey, let me feed the beast. Christian Kirk, four, four, four. Okay, this is history here. It's Up and Adams' first time at the Super Bowl, and our very first guest joining us to kick it all off is a local boy from Phoenix, Phoenix who plays all the way across the country. He just finished his fifth season in the NFL. Five years already? This past year, he set career highs, uh, excuse me, in receptions, in yards, in touchdowns, in bags of money. Please welcome in Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver Christian Kirk. Hi. Hi, how are you? It's so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, what's your vibe so far with the Super Bowl week? It's like all, it's all the signage everywhere. All, it's like yeah. high vibes. Obviously, since I'm from here, it's really cool to see the city kind of like embracing everything and everything that they're doing for us. So I know everybody's excited here. Okay, tell me about Phoenix. I've only been here once, really. It was for 2015 during the Super Bowl. Yeah. I went to the golf tourney. I went to Waste Management, all of that. Like, where are the, what are the best parts about Phoenix? Where do I need to go eat? Yeah, well, there's so many different places that you can go eat. Obviously, the Mexican food here is great. But, oh like, gosh. that's probably the, my favorite part about living here is there's so many different food options and, like, just the quality of food, the different restaurants and whatnot food scenes unmatched and you can literally get anything out here you can go hide camelback you can go down waste management open is this week so that's going. a lot of fun i'll be there on friday go out there and see a lot of people that kind of grew up with and you know had some relationships with and then obviously all the stuff going on with the super bowl we love that and hope i mean your jacksonville jags are trending that way you've got great coaches we're going to get into all of that but um the arizona cardinals were your local team growing up right yeah look at you back in high school Could we have this what is this, uh -oh. this is christian kirk back in high school oh, were you no. were you the mascot or you were with the mascot what do we got do we have oh, this oh wow Just talk me through this TBC. look what the hell you want. <laughs> no. That is a uh, Arizona Cardinals Player of the Year. So I won Arizona Cardinals High School Player of the Year my senior year. I think that's my senior year. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Uh, the, we love that. The Jorts. I don't know what what kind of. And you were drafted like. by them, and after four great seasons, you uh, went from the Cardinals mascot to this one. Do we have that one? Oh, our guy. You got this guy. I don't know what's going on back there. there we go. Now, what did you that's, make of this? That's when this our happened? guy. We had actually, That's our guy. We actually in the offensive meeting, we had him as one of our uh, our like staple backgrounds for our, our presentations for our meetings. He just he kind of brought the energy, set the tone for us. Did he really? Yeah. Well, he's, he's a, you see he's him dancing violent. in the back of the end zone. Um, talk to me about your season. It ended <clears throat> short. I know you had bigger goals as a team. Mm -hmm. But for yourself, career highs, I mean that, 84 grabs. And you made plays in the biggest moments, too, to mm -hmm. try to get your team deeper into the playoffs. Yeah. When you look back at how the season went, how do you feel? Um, you know, it felt great. Uh, definitely accomplished a lot that I wanted to accomplish just for me, only f for myself, you know, just going out there and, and proving that I'm the player that I know that I am and have always have been. And, you know, going to Jacksonville and getting those opportunities and, you know, with the team success that we had, that was, you know, what I wanted to do is help bring that team along and, you know, help be a part of something, you know, and grow something. And that's what we're growing there in Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really happy with, you know, we're the strides we were able to make this season. And, you know, we're all hungry for next year, though. You obviously were in Arizona, so you got the taste of another NFL quarterback and, and you know, some of those things. When you play with Trevor Lawrence, what's the one quality that stands out about him? Leadership, leadership and his ability in adverse situations to just persevere, but also stay within himself. Um, you know, it's easy. And I know everybody, you know, talks about, you know, the Chargers games, but there are so many different times. You know, you look in October, we were on a five game losing streak. Yeah. And, you know, he never blinked. You know, his approach never changed. If anything, he, he worked even harder. He was hard on himself. He was critical, accountable. And, you know, when you have that, those type of qualities, especially in a quarterback who just turned 23 this year, uh, you know, it's pretty special. So he's only going to get better. And, you know, those, those are some of the things that I appreciate about him. One of my favorite things about NFL, because I'm, I'm a fan, I just love to watch, is a quarterback and their wide receiver. Right. And that clicks. And I see it, you know, Aaron Rodgers coming on our show at some point this week, him and Christian Watson. How that, you know, it was not hitting. 
at all. And then all of a sudden, it started and it was great. You guys have that. I'm looking at this year. 84 catches. So I'm not going to short you. I'm not going to say. 1,108 yards receiving, eight touchdowns. You have more receptions than Mike Evans and Scary Terry, the captain, Terry McLaurin, okay? More receiving yards than DK Metcalf and Jamar Chase, number one, and more touchdowns than Tyree Kill. How, take a victory lap. You're too modest because you know everybody said, why did he get that paycheck? Why did we pay him? Yeah. Like, how do you feel personally vindicated by that? Well, it's funny because I still feel like I don't get the respect that I deserve. And it's kind of been that way. And, you know, with all the noise and after I signed my deal this offseason, it was, you know, it was the loudest. And then now, you know, especially with the season that I had, you know, started getting real quiet and everybody kind of, you know, kind of hushed a little bit. But I just, uh, I want my respect. You know, I feel like I'm one of the, the best receivers in the NFL. And that's the way I play. That's the chip that I carry on my shoulder. And um, I'm, I'm going to keep earning it. Yeah. yeah. So how do you do that? And what's the personal goal for you? What, what, what will it take you think to get that respect? You Honest, and Trevor, because Trevor yeah. doesn't really get it either. Honestly, it starts with us, you know, as a team um, coming back out next year and being the team that we know that we can be and taking that next step, you know, going from the divisional to playing in the AFC championship to, you know, making a Super Bowl push. And I know that's the only thing that we have in our minds. Uh, obviously, it hurt. We got that, you know, that taste in our mouth of, you know, being that close, being one game away. <clears throat> and so, you know, we want to get back there. Your last win of the season. Oh, my gosh. One of the best comeback wins in all of NFL history. I want you to talk me through this. You're down 27 a zip, wild card round. You know, you went on the field goal, but it is this touchdown in the fourth quarter. Can we please cue it up? And Christian, just talk me through this insane play. So it was, <clears throat> it's basically, you know, one of our red zone plays. A lot of the touchdowns that I've scored this, this past year, um, you know, we're out breaking routes like this. And it's almost like a clear the court, you know, one on one. It isolated me with the nickel. And uh, I just had to go win. And Trevor threw a great ball. Ah! And I made to kind of just shield him off, put my, you know, put my body in there and uh, just make the catch. You know, it's, 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 these are the moments that you work for. These are the moments that, you know, it all kind of starts you know, paying off for you. What do you remember from after the game? I know everyone made, everyone, like Waffle House was the story. That was the <laughs> script, right? Yeah. We're going to Waffle House. What, yeah. what else do you want people to remember from like how you felt? Or what do you remember? I personally was in disbelief. Like, Total shock, had no clue like what happened. You almost, you know, for that second half, second half, you almost black out and you're just so locked into, you know, just taking it one play at a time, one play at a time. And then you look up and, you know, we send the field goal team out there and we're kicking a, a field goal to win the game. I didn't personally look at it. I, in those moments, I just face the crowd and whatever reaction they give me. So just, you know, hearing them go crazy, knowing that it came in and, you know, we were able to win the game. It's just like a sigh of relief. Like, my goodness, like we did it and you know we're on to the next round but just total shock and uh exhaustion too that was, that was a lot that was a that was you know a long game and, what did you, you know, do for the game literally went home i think actually <laughs> me and my fiance went and got taco bell did you yeah we went and got, take we went, that waffle we house we got some taco bell and, listen some uh, of the best receivers like Devontae <laughs> adams love taco bell it's yeah, not a bad move we went we went and got some taco bell she loves taco bell so same yeah we uh we, best late night food best so so we went and just went home and went to sleep. That's amazing. You yeah. were tired. Yeah. I can imagine. Oh, what do you make of this it. game? So it's, it's, you know, in your hometown, Phoenix, two crazy good teams in different ways. Yeah. Who, who has the edge, you think? It's tough. You know, like you said, both high-powered offenses with great defenses, um, you know, two really great quarterbacks with a lot of weapons. And it'll be really interesting to see. You know, obviously, we played both of them. Yes. Played Philly earlier in, in a monsoon. And then uh, <gasps> played Kansas City oh twice. Gosh, I don't know why we don't have that. I would love to. Yeah, we should have asked yeah, you about that. Was, that. that was the the coldest game I've probably ever played in. I mean, weather-wise, temperature-wise, I didn't say it, but with the amount of rain and the wind and whatnot, yeah. oh, it, was, it was brutal. What makes him, uh, the, what's the scariest thing about him? I mean, the Defensively. Fact, I think, as a team, Philly, they can win any type of way. You know, if they need to throw for 350, they can throw for 350. If they want to run for 250, they can do that. And so when you have an offense like that, you know, that, that's really hard to stop. And then defensively, it starts with their front. You know, when, when you have that front, putting the pressure on the quarterback and then you have guys in the back end that you know are ball hawks that can make a play on the ball you know they're they're, they're pretty complete all around and uh, you know Kansas City has has the same type of playmaker so 
It's they're called. all banged up. I don't know, like, are they, are, you know, are those younger playmakers, yeah. the Sky Moors of the world? Yeah. McColl's not playing. Juju, veteran now-ish. Right. Like, is he going to be able to make those plays on that secondary? Yeah, you know, I think so because he's been there in those type of moments before. He's been in the playoffs, and, you know, a lot of those guys have. Um, they have Marquez as well, and, you know, guys that can go out there and make those plays, and they did it, you know, in, in the AFC Championship game when they needed it. And so they're definitely going to rely on him. They're going to rely on him heavy, but, you know, it's – It'll be tough. I think it's going to be close. I don't, I don't yeah? think by any, I think it's going to come down to the I wanna, Yeah, I think it'll be a, a great game. Okay, Christian Kirk, nobody's rapping me. No, I'm getting no nothing in my ear from anyone, so I don't know if it's uh, left or can we come down there now? Oh, let's come over here. Christian Kirk, we're going down here. Right, I'm going to take my 818 with me. <laughs> okay, it. we're going to go down here because we've got lots of goodies. We've got an 818 bar. Yeah. Christian Kirk, did you hear me? One of the best wide receivers in the game. Sorry, DK. Sorry, Tyreek. He had more <laughs> touchdowns and catches than you did. Here's the deal. How good are you at ping pong, though? I'm pretty good. Okay, so we here's the deal. We have these incredible swag bags. Can I see one of them? We have all this going on over here. Sure. If you hit, you're going to have 30 seconds. All right. If, we need you to hit three, and you get a, a Up and Adam swag bag. If you don't hit three, I get to text Doug Peterson from your phone. Oh, Lord. Okay, so you all better right. get it going. And, if, and keep more. going. <laughs> keep going even if you hit three because we're going to have a leaderboard. Do I have to use a paddle? No. Just you can throw them. Just you throw can bounce them, whatever. Okay, are all we right. going to start? 30 seconds on the clock, and... Yeah. Oh, oh, oh keep, keep it going. Over here. I'll help you on this side. Come on, here we go. I'll help you over that's here. One. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Get in there. Dang. Oh my gosh, I'm close. Did y'all rig this? There we go. Okay, two, two, two. How many times a time? Oh. 20 seconds. Come on. You got it at the buzzer, at the buzzer. Stop going. One more. Oh! One more. Oh! That counts. That was at the buzzer. It counts. That was at the buzzer. Look, I was going to send Doug Peterson the crazy text <laughs> messages, so that's good that that didn't happen. All right, we're going to give you this. We're going to say thank you for hanging out with us. Thank and, you so uh, much. You hear the love we give you, right? I do. I do. Okay, and I really you hear appreciate it, it. Because people want to talk crazy, and we love you here thank you. Uh, on the show. Thank you so much. I'm up and Adam Stan. You're now. the best. I, see, I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Don't forget us when you're... You know, when oh, you get what you want and I your won't. dreams come true. Okay, <laughs> we'll be back after this. Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall, are they, what's going on there? We will talk to both of them after this. Jay Cutler, the white whale, on the show. Thank you.